Welcome to Find Your Way Home. We are excited to bring you another hour of healing. I'm Christy Watkins here with Vicki Smith, and you may have joined us on our first healing session, which was a month ago. It's going to be on the third Saturday of every month. And the time that we start live is 11 a.m. Pacific time in California. So you'll have to Google whatever that means for you. <laughs> but wanted to start just by posting on the screen a letter from Vicki's Bishop because we read your comments and uh, Vicki and I continue to pray. She has a team that prays for you, by the way. If you post, post a comment on YouTube, that does not go unheard. And so this is her letter of suitability and approval. So there it is, folks. She's legit. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you very much. So uh, we'd like to start, as always, with a prayer protection. We go through a half hour of Vicki's teachings on healing, and then we do a half hour of praying for you, the listeners, and know that these healings are happening not just in this live show that we do, but they happen whenever a person watches the video in perpetuity. So we thank God for being outside of time, and don't worry if you miss this, it actually doesn't matter. <laughs> Praise God for that. Amen. So Vicki, would you start us with a prayer, please? Sure, and thank you for having me, Christine. Absolutely. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. amen. Heavenly Father, we just give you thanks and praise for this divine appointment for each and every soul who's hearing the sound of my voice, the sound of this broadcast. Mm -hmm. We give you thanks and thanksgiving for your holy and precious blood. I speak and pray the holy and precious blood upon the entire conversation over each and every soul, all of their intentions in the name of Jesus Christ. I call upon the mantle of Our Lady to come and surround each one of us allowing us to feel her warm embrace, constant presence, constant love, and constant intercession for us. Come, Holy Spirit, come. Come by the means of the powerful intercession of the Immaculate Heart of Mary, your well-beloved spouse. Come, holy angels of war, surround and protect us. Keep a hedge of protection between us and the enemy 5,000 miles out in every direction. In the name of Jesus Christ, I speak of spiritual soundproofing, a spiritual blindness upon the enemy that he's not able to see, hear, relay, transmit, or convey anything spoken, written, or in any forms of communication in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, including the fruits that follow and follow-up conversations in the name of Jesus Christ. Were there to be any listening and ungodly spirits that are trying to attempt to infuse themselves into this conversation, we rebuke, renounce, and reject them in the name of Jesus Christ. We sever every tie, tentacle, and attenuation in the name of Jesus Christ. We send them immediately and directly to the foot of the cross in the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ, may your will be done upon this podcast and upon each and every soul who's listening. In the name of God the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Vicki. And as always, we will say the unity prayer, which blinds Satan. It's from the Bishop-approved movement of the flame of love. And it, Jesus prays with us to the Father. My adorable Jesus. May our feet journey together. May our hands gather in unity. May our hearts beat in unison. May our souls be in harmony. May our thoughts be as one. May our ears listen to the silence together. May our glances profoundly penetrate each other. And may our lips pray together to gain mercy from the Eternal Father. Amen. 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 So Vicki, you were going to give some testimonies that you received for right. yeah, what you did last yeah. time. Yeah. Oh my gosh. I am just so moved, so stirred. Some people are receiving healing. I want to really point this out online while they're listening. Some people are receiving healing after the fact when they hear recording, because as you pointed out, God is outside time and space. And um, so some of those healings, and I want to just point out, so the voice of the ministry 
is the fruits. They speak for themselves. I'm not the healer. Jesus is the healer. And that's the voice, the testimony of what he has done, is doing, and will be doing. So some of those testimonies are a woman wrote in and said she is completely free of anxiety, totally free of all anxiety. And she mentioned a variety of other physical ailments that she was free of as well. Another soul wrote in and said their kidneys are healed. Their numbers are going up. Another soul wrote in because, now yeah, this is important. The Holy Spirit can give us words of knowledge. That's a gift of the Holy Spirit. I got in a word of knowledge about someone's jaw being healed. Um, I just can see a jaw. That's how I see it. And uh, that person wrote in and said their jaw is completely healed. Oh, I can feel presence now as we're talking. Um, and so as people also are receiving healing, as they're putting into practice some of these spiritual teachings into their lives by operating through the lens and language of love versus the lens and language of fear. Now, I'd like to say at the get-go, I had already started getting about two weeks ago people who I believe I was getting words of knowledge for uh, that will receive healing. And so if this is you, claim it and receive it in the name of Jesus. If it's someone you know, you can stand the gap for them and claim it and receive it in the name of Jesus. I saw um, a person who had, is going to be healed of peripheral uh, vision issues. They cannot see from the peripheral vision. If that's you, claim it, receive it in the name of Jesus, and thank you, Jesus, for healing. I also saw um, a soul who had something going on with their right hand. To me, this is what it looked like. Uh, it, like it was almost bound in this position. They're going to be healed in the name of Jesus. I also see uh, someone with a tongue issue, and it's sort of like on the right side, almost like there's, if there's a spot and it's almost under the tongue is where I see it. Receive that healing in the name of Jesus. Um, so there's more I know that's going to come. What we do is we praise God now. Because in 1 Thessalonians, he actually said, praise me unceasingly. And oh, here's a quiz, Christine. What does unceasingly mean? unceasingly <laughs> always and forever <laughs> amen so no matter what's going on we want to praise unceasingly um for whatever's going on because there's more than just physical healing there's emotional healing there's physical healing there's spiritual healing there's also i want you to know about growing in holiness um when you pray that prayer growing in holiness for example uh, my daily dose recently said, I used the prayer that Father, um, I heard Father Ripperger's um, talk on guardian angels and angels. And one of the things he said during Lent is a great, <laughs> great thing to pray for is allow your guardian angel, ask your guardian angel to um, interiorly humiliate you so that you can grow in humility. Do you see how the growth area is there? If you're going to grow in one area in strength, then you're challenged by its opposition. Does that make sense? And so the, right after I prayed that prayer, I had three amazing challenges. <laughs> um, and so I go, oh, it's because of the prayer I prayed. So that's another part of healing too. Healing our own humanity, our own responses, where we may be judgmental or this sort of thing. For example, um, the Lord told me, taught me one time, he says, there's a difference between discernment and judgment. And judgment, you know, is part of our humanity where we do that. He said that um, judgment, there's an emotional weight to it. It feels heavy. Um, but discernment, which you get from wisdom from the Holy Spirit, it's not, it's not you in the natural sense, it's the Holy Spirit, um, feels lighter. And so we want to just go for those words of knowledge. Also, there's someone who has a throat issue I'm sensing now, um, like lower, about right here. And, um, okay, so I see uh, Michaela is, I just claim the uh, peripheral vision healing in the name of Jesus. Instead of saying you've lost your perif peripheral vision, I want you to claim healing over peripheral vision in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I also want to point something else about like Michaela. Um, I, this is just kind of an interesting story because it has to do with healing and the way the healing came about. Okay. Because I gave a, 
a talk at a Catholic uh, middle school and, but it was to the teachers and uh, I went around and I knew Jesus wanted to heal. And so people who had pain, I said, I'm going to pray for you. And I always go, Christine, full throttle for healing in the name of Jesus. Okay. And, but I have to watch how it's done. Sometimes it's done instantaneously or progressively, or sometimes there is a creative aspect to it where God makes something from nothing. However, there's other things that we need to look at in the healing area. And you and I talked about this, Christine, um, where there is an organic cause for someone's illness. Um, let's say you have a sore throat because you were exposed to whoever had a sore throat and the sniffles. Okay. Well, you do what you need to do naturally to take care of the sore throat, the throat lozenge, vitamin C, zinc, etc. There's natural ways that we go about receiving healing. I will, I will address the topic about the teaching. Well, the teachers real quickly, I was praying for healing. Someone wasn't receiving the healing that I was hoping they would get. Like they were at an eight and they only went to a six. And I was asking the Lord, what do I do about that? And he said, invite everyone to pray for the soul. They're counting on you, not on me. They don't think they're included. So I said, so I let everybody know, I believe this is what the Lord's placing on my heart. Would you join me in prayer? I need your prayers. I'm only one tiny candle, but you guys, if we get all your candles together, we'll be ablaze. The woman was healed. But I got to tell you, uh, going back to the topic of organic uh, nature of an illness, what do you do about that? Well, we in Sirach, it talks about going to doctors, medicine, and prayer. So if, if you have an illness, then you do doctors, and you do prayers, and you do medicine. You do your therapies and this sort of thing. But you simultaneously, you're doing two things. You're going at it naturally, and you're also going at it supernaturally together. Look what happened to my hands. And you go into prayer. You go to, through it naturally, and you go through it supernaturally together, seeking words of knowledge from the Holy Spirit as best as you can. Uh, some of you think I always get words of knowledge. I don't. I'd like to. I don't. But I, I know that you can too. When you're seeking peace in your life and you're wondering like, why don't I having peace? Begin to speak peace. Because there's uh, in Philippians 4, 8, it talks about our focus. And I believe, Christian, you have that scripture. If you want peace, you set your gaze on what is peaceful, and that is the scripture. Set your, well, this is Colossians 3, 2, and that's awesome. It says, set your minds on things above, not on the earth. Okay, so if you're having the issue, whatever it is, and I'm going to share this with you. I didn't share it with Christine. Can I see Christine on the screen as well? Um, we got some news yesterday that... Um, there was something that lit up on my mom's PET scan and it looks like she has stage four cancer. Mm. Now, what do you do with that information? What did, what was Colossians three, two, just telling us to do right now? Train my gaze on what's above. There's also scripture that says that we are to not count on what's seen, but what's unseen. Okay. Here's what's interesting about that. I hear the words, gosh, something came up on her PET scan. My goodness, doesn't your mind start to go from one thing to another to wonder, well, what stage are we in? What do we need to do? What do we? I have to back up for a minute and go, wait a minute. I'm hearing the natural thing, and that's important. I need to gain the information I can because knowledge is power. Get the knowledge you can. There you go. 2 Corinthians 4.18, it says, Look not to the things that are seen, but the things that are unseen. For the things that are seen are transient, but the things that are unseen are eternal. Do you know that Hebrews 11.1 1 matches that? And that's the description of faith. What does faith look like? The natural and the supernatural working together. What's my hands doing again? 
I didn't even plan this. I just saw, oh, wow, look, I'm praying. In Hebrews 11, 1, it says, faith is the realization of things hoped for. What am I hoping for? Well, I'd love a miracle in my mom's life. I'd love there to be no cancer. The cancer doctor says, it looks like cancer. It smells like cancer. I hope I'm wrong. Okay, maybe she is or isn't. She's going to get a biopsy. We'll find out for sure. I thought this was an important story to share because I have a natural thing going on, but I have a supernatural presence I need to count on. So in Hebrews 11, it says, faith is the realization of things hoped for. And the next sentence is the evidence of things not seen. So just because you don't see it the way you want to see it, I'm inviting you, stay the course, the natural and the supernatural coming together in prayer, getting a word of knowledge. My word of knowledge might be, oh, this is the exact right doctor who has the exact right uh, way in which she wants to treat this, which she talked about immunotherapy. She has seen this in her education. And she's going to use her education, disseminate it to us so we can make good decisions. Does that make sense? Yes, I'm so glad you brought up the organic and the spiritual when it comes to healing, because I think it's also important that people understand we're all in the same soup. We all have these bodies that are subject to eventual decay and occasional decaying parts <laughs> as we traverse in this life. I ask you to pray for Vicki, please, because she's going in for hip surgery. So please pray for her. Her hip gives her a lot of pain. Um, no, she's not immune from pain. Um, and then, uh, you know, I just got over a cold and y I'm sure you are suffering or you know someone who's suffering something in the body and the mind. So we're all in this soup together. And I love that um, we're tackling it from all angles because we don't want to ignore the organic in favor of the spiritual or ignore the spiritual in favor of the organic. They always go together. And that's Amen. how we pray through this life and, and traverse through the crosses that inevitably come, um, the pains and, and often physical that inevitably come. It doesn't mean you've necessarily done anything wrong. Uh, this is the life that we are in. Thanks to Adam and Eve. <laughs> so do not yeah. fret, do not worry. Right. But, and I also would just point out that while you're going through the trial, there's actually a necessity that we need to keep our minds on. And you find that in James 1. We had that on last time, which is where James actually invites us in the middle of the trial, hip surgery, stage four cancer, alcoholism, kids falling away from it. He says, consider it pure joy. I'm like, James, what? Here's the reason why. Because we're focused on eternity, not what's of the earth. Okay, so in Romans 12, 2, it talks about do not be conformed of this earth, but be transformed by the constant renewing of your mind. Okay, Where's, what's supposed to be going with our mind? We're supposed to be focused with our mind, with the mind of Christ, who is the overcomer on the cross. Okay, so while you're going through the trial, James points out that there's perseverance that's occurring there. And some of the great mystic and, and saintly writers have written about the need for perseverance to grow in holiness. My friends, anybody want to grow in holiness? I do. And so the thing is, if you want to grow in holiness, grow in piety, these challenges will come up. What do you do with them? We have the mind of Christ as best we can. We also go into, I think it's 2 Corinthians 10, uh, 3 through 6, where he says, take those thoughts captive. Okay, so you're suffering. Okay, so I have this hip thing. Am I going up in stairs? I'm feeling it when I'm doing this, that, and that. I'm feeling it. It's aching, etc. I'm doing several things. I'm tackling it naturally. I see the doctor, and I'm taking the medicine I need to take. 
Okay. I'm doing some strengthening exercise. Do you see what I'm saying? I'm tackling on the natural end, but supernaturally. I'm also praying for word of knowledge. And I'm also saying, Lord, if you want to heal this, thank you for healing it. Okay. I also have a team who's praying for my healing. Okay. So this is a supernatural aspect of the same thing. The hip's an issue, tackling it naturally and supernaturally. I have people who are praying for the healing. Okay. Now, while I'm experiencing the suffering, I'm working on perseverance. The Lord said to St. Catherine, that God the Father actually said to St. Catherine of Siena, he said, I perfect you through perseverance. And if I don't give you something to persevere through, how can I perfect you? I do want to be perfected. Sometimes I, do, I want to dictate how I want to be perfected. <laughs> um, but remember, his ways are not our ways. That's Isaiah 55. Isaiah 55 says that he doesn't have our same thoughts. His thoughts are higher. His high thoughts are about loving us and having an intimate relationship with us. In this intimate relationship with us, we want to grow in being sanctified, purified, edified, and unified to him. So our beautiful saints have taught us along the way through some of their quotes and books about what to do during the trial. Some of this is the way in which I learned. For example, um, when I learned about, uh, oh, I want to step back for one second. On the suffering, when I feel the aching, you know, Mother Angelica was great about teaching this on the EWTN network. She said, don't waste that suffering. Offer it. Now, many times, don't you think offer it up here? Offer it right here. Offer it so you're having a heart-to-heart offering. It does good work that we don't see. You just had several scriptures that came up about not what we see, but what's unseen. Does that make sense? So the unseen is actually very, very active. Can I give you a wow story real, real quick? I think Christian has it up. Okay, so Christian, it's about the two things about the Eucharistic miracle um, that has been unapproved as of yet. Don't put that up yet. And then the other thing is, some of you guys know that uh, I received escarches on my hand. Okay, so the the translation is, it looks like little glitter on my hand. Okay, and uh, I won't go all into it because I don't want you to focus on me. I want you to focus on what Jesus is doing. Um, I've been receiving it for several years. And when I received it, I just thought in my head, in my own little intellect, oh, this is, um, this is sparkly glitter. I didn't think there's more to it, but I was wanted to show somebody what it looked like. So get ready, Christian. <laughs> this is going to be the awesome part. And I snapped a picture of it in the sun. I blew it up. And on the left, you can see the first one What's to my left. On the left, you can see an image of a cross. I was like, you see, guys, I didn't see it for what was actually there. And I'm like, how long has this been going on? Are there more? On the right hand side, I have many other images, but I just asked them to put these two up. On the other side, you see what looks like to me, a dove flapping its wings. When the image first comes up, it's so, so tiny. I don't see it. I just thought it was a speck. You can take them down. Thanks, Christian. And so they are amazing. The Lord told me one time, and I want to encourage all of you who are writing, that God wants to use you too. Don't count on what's seen as much as what he is doing. If you have childhood trauma, count on that he's healing. Come into agreement with healing. Okay, do what you need to do with therapy and that sort of thing. But simultaneously, come into agreement with, I claim to have the mind of Christ in the name of Jesus. You see how that happens? Now, many of us who are Catholic and on this channel, not everybody's Catholic and welcome everyone. Everyone is welcome at his table. Um, 
when we receive Jesus in the Eucharist, it does look like a flat, white, round piece of bread, doesn't it? But we're told, we're told it is the body of Christ. I have permission to share this picture, which Christian's getting ready to put up. This woman that uh, you'll see soon uh, on whenever I talk to her again. She, it, it, here she is. She received Jesus in 2016. After she received Jesus, she felt the Eucharist growing on her tongue. The white round, what we think is the bread, and we just walk away carelessly, mind, mindlessly. She goes back to her pew and she's saying, wait, something's happening. She didn't pray for it to happen, but when she did pray for it, now this is interesting how God answered her prayer. She said, Jesus, I want your heart. She was thinking here. I want your heart. I want to have your heart beat within me. She goes back to the pew, feels it growing. And then a picture is taken. She is, this is unapproved but she does have many supporters in the priests. Three different priests are looking at her. I have not been able to receive Jesus the same. I've gone deeper and more profoundly. Thank you for putting that up, Christian. Can I so, just say, um, sure. so thank you. So what you just saw is called the Eucharistic miracle, which means it's Jesus himself in the Eucharist, which is the body and blood of Christ, which looks like a round, flat wafer for those of you who are not Catholic. It's also called the host. And so when Vicki says all are welcome at the table, God is inviting everyone to be at this table of healing, at his table of love. And if you decide, if you're not Catholic, and you decide you want to be Catholic now or in the future, there is a whole process of learning what the Catholic Church teaches and why, which is often contrary to what the world teaches, because the world doesn't teach us facts, by the way, teaches us half facts and wrong opinions. <laughs> and yes. so just be open to the fact that if you don't like something about the church, and there are many sins not to like in the people in the church, but the holiness of the church, the way Jesus moves through it, is always holy, is always perfect. And the way he is most perfect is in the Eucharist. So he is inviting, if you're interested in being Catholic, realize that if you go through the process of the Rite of Christian Initiation of Adults, RCIA, you get to receive the very body and blood of Christ. And you just saw in that picture, according to Vicki and the priests who have witnessed this woman, and this isn't, she's not the only one. There are many people around the world who have, we actually, Christian and I, who's behind the scenes right now, my son helping maneuver the cameras, he has a friend and his friend lived with us. And that friend actually had the body of Christ, the wafer turn into flesh on his tongue as well when he was um, on pilgrimage. So um, this happens, folks, because Jesus is saying, I'm real, I'm in the Catholic Church, I'm really there. And when I said in scripture, this is my body, this is my blood, do this in memory of me, he wasn't kidding and he wasn't speaking figuratively. So it's it's a beautiful gift. Another thing I want to add um, before Vicki speaks and we go to pray for you is when Vicki was talking about the perseverance needed at times, uh, a friend of mine had this beautiful experience in prayer with Jesus. She said, why aren't you healing me? Why aren't you taking away my cross? Why is this burden so heavy? I feel like I'm pushing a big boulder up a hill and you're not getting rid of the boulder like I ask. And I push and I push and I push and I keep pushing it up this hill. Where are you? This is hard. This is a struggle. Where are you? And the Lord told her, you've been moving up this whole time and I want you to look at yourself. I want you to see how strong your arms have become. I want you to see how strong your will has become. 
I want you to see how your breath has gotten stronger. I want you to look down at your thighs and see the strength and the power in your thighs. I want you to look and see what I've created in you through pushing this boulder up the hill and not stopping. Great testimony, you know, gosh. And also thank you, Christine, for pointing that out about the all are welcome at his table, meaning everyone is welcome to come into the uh, Catholic faith. I'm a convert. And I'm a convert. I'm a, the reason I'm a convert is because I, I asked Jesus to confirm for me that I was supposed to become a, a, a Catholic and he did it through a miracle in my body. Um, Along the same lines, Christine, when you're talking, I was asking the Lord one time, I was lamenting, uh, why am I suffering so long? And then he, he gave me a very clear answer. He says, now you're praying prayers you would not have otherwise prayed had I not put you in this position. So the whole point being, the divine mind is higher. Sometimes we don't understand. and But simultaneously, we can receive healing in all these kinds of ways. Uh, I, like I said, those people who I saw the right hand and the peripheral vision, and then someone on the, under the underneath the tongue and more. So I go, my friends, I go full throttle for healing when I'm praying for somebody. And um, meaning I'm looking for a word of knowledge. I'm looking for, is there an organic cause? I'm looking for a doorway. I'm looking for ways in which the Lord wants me to pray. I'm looking for scriptures. When I say looking for him, it happens in my spirit. And I want you guys to know, I did not always pray this way. I didn't have a huge education on everything. The Lord taught me a lot interiorly. And then he also put people and circumstances in my life that taught me exteriorly. He knows how to get your attention. You can pray for healing and faith. You can pray for healing because you were anointed. You can pray for healing by picking up the word and speaking it upon a situation. You know, I got to say, this in this way, you open up a door for him to work. Some of us close the door because we want him to work in a certain way. And when he's not working in that certain way, intellectually in our own heads, which is a lot of what I had done in the past and I've learned to get better at not doing, we actually close him off because it's actually in scripture. It says, don't complain, don't grumble. Well, then what am I supposed to do if I'm suffering like this? Well, we have the substitute behavior. And that is about offering, about learning the word. Well, what does the word say about my healing? What, what does it say? So I speak it upon people because in Hebrews 4, it says the word of God is living and it's effective. So I learned from somebody, uh, one of these great teachers, her name is Maria Vidia. If you can get the book, Power of the Tongue, uh, it transformed my life. It's only this small. Um, and I began to apply the scripture she applied in her own life to my life. And it was life changing. So if you have someone, this is the way I learned to pray. Let's say it's an addiction. Let's say you have someone who has an addiction. Um, I pray the opposite and, and learn where the Holy Spirit shows me, where the open door is. So I watch for these open doors. Mm -hmm. Was it personal sin? Was it personal trauma? Was it family tree? Was it the occult? Was it a word curse? Was it a soul tie? Okay. Was it an inner vow? Do you know how many people have been healed when I spoke the truth of their identity upon them? They had an inner vow of what I call the victim stance. And it was filled with mind uh, memories, triggers of trauma that happened in their past that made them think they were a bad person, that they weren't worthy uh, of God just to love on them. God said he loves you. And in Psalm 139, he says, uh, I know when you come and go sit and stand, I carved you out of the palm of my hand. I know you so intimately. I've counted the hairs on your head. Oh like I've numbered the stars. That is how intimate he wants to be with you. And St. Catherine in the dialogue writes a lot about this too. God the Father answered so many of her questions. I prayed for a woman who had like COPD one time. And I found that her COPD came from feeling like a misfit, 
but it also came from some of her life choices where she smoked and did this, that, and the other and didn't treat her lungs well. But the Lord can restore that. And so I got this vision of her feeling isolated. And then she internalized that as an inner vow, said, you know, uh, I'm a misfit. No one likes me. That opened up the door for an orphan spirit. I'm not going to go into that aspect of that, but sometimes I can see those things. In the name of Jesus, I root it out in the name of Jesus, because that's where power and authority comes, not by Vicki Smith. <laughs> it comes by the power and authority of the name of Jesus Christ. And I even call on the intercession of saints while I'm praying, like Padre Pio, who you see above. So why, Vicki, why don't we do that now? Because we promised the listeners that we'd pray for them. And Absolutely. Um, so I, I also want to mention, um, please don't try to contact Vicki for prayer. She, what we're trying to do, she's, she's too overwhelmed. She's one person. What we want to do is give you our prayer and Vicky's gifts through this podcast. That is the whole point that you can come back to past podcasts to this podcast. You can um, reach out in terms of comments and ask for healing. Every she will have her prayer team praying all the time for anyone who watches this. So you can be assured of prayers, but review what she just said and listen to the ways that she has learned to pray for healing. Because what we want you to do is what she's doing. We want to teach you how to fish, not just hand you a bunch of fish. Because Vicki can hand you a fish right now, but then you don't, you ate the fish and it's gone. And then you think, where's Vicky? Where's Vicky? I need Vicky. I need Vicky. I could heal if I had Vicky. That's going to be the wrong thing that we're offering you and make you feel helpless. Um, we are trying yeah, you to should feel empowered. You should feel empowered, empowered by this conversation for, your, for yourself. Yes. So as, so as we move into prayer for you right now, we want you to feel empowered. So, um, Vicki, could you please lead the Absolutely. prayer for everyone? And and please do try this at home. As well. Yes. 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 So, so what I've done in testimony, I want to tell you, you have heard testimony just now. Testimony, the Lord told me, is what he has done for others and will do, will continue to do. So, as he continues to do this, I help through testimony, giving you hope. And as you have hope, it opens up the door more. And this is what the testimony does. You've opened up the door more. So as you get ready to receive this prayer, because I am watching what's going on right now uh, on, the, on the chat, and I've been praying. And by the way, some of my prayer team is actually on uh, the chat watching this and interceding. And I even saw one of them say, my heart's quickening. That is her discernment marker that says God is working. Okay, so hallelujah. So position yourself now. Good, whatever that looks like for you. Good. Heavenly Father, I give you thanks and praise for each and every soul who's listening to the sound of my voice, the sound of this broadcast, that you transcend time and space. And through your transcending time and space, even before your listeners got on, you knew their intentions. You knew that two weeks ago they were planning to get onto this podcast so that they can receive healing. I thank you, Lord, for speaking to their heart. I thank you, Lord, for speaking to their mind. I thank you, Lord Jesus. Come upon these souls. Come upon all the names who are coming upon this chat and those who will hear it later. In your holy and mighty name, I speak your holy and precious blood upon the crown of their head to the soles of their feet. I speak your holy and precious blood in the name of Jesus Christ from the victory that you won for us in the agony in the garden where blood was poured out through your prayers where you put to death sins and spirits coming against the emotions lord jesus pour yourself out from the agony in the garden i'm feeling his presence 
I expect that you are too. Watch for a tingling, watch for heat, watch for coolness, watch for a breath. Just watch for these things. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Heavenly Father, thank you, Jesus, for your son. So through the agony in the garden, pour yourself out over their emotions, putting to death sins and spirits that come against their emotions. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, and by the authority of the name of Jesus Christ, I thank you, Lord, through your scourging, that while you were a scourge, you were putting to death sins and spirits that come against the flesh. Pour yourself out over the flesh of each and every person, over the listener, over their children, over their parents, over their generations, over all their relationships, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, putting to death sins and spirits coming against their flesh. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, through the victory and gift of your passion, when the crown of thorns was placed on your head and you were pouring out your blood in humility, may your holy and precious blood, which put to death sins and spirits that come against the mind, be poured out upon each and every soul's mind, healing their thoughts, healing their memories, healing their conversations, healing their verbiage, healing their language, healing the way in which they process life, healing their life events, giving them supernatural memory to be able to remember the word, be able to remember the prayers what that they want to pray, and letting them know that praying from the heart is all that matters because you said you hear the prayers of a righteous man. In the name of Jesus Christ, I thank you for pouring yourself out upon each and every soul as you carried the cross to Golgotha, where you fell three times and got up three times for your children here who are looking for healing from you, where you put to death sins and spirits that come against the will. Pour yourself out upon their will. Let them experience the intimacy of your presence now in the name of Jesus. Let them feel your holy presence. Restore, renew, and refresh their spirit with this infilling from the living waters, from the wellspring of grace. Open the throne room of heaven and pour yourself out upon your children. They love you. They're hoping in you. Lord Jesus Christ, in the crucifixion, through the nail wounds in the hands, the nail wounds in the feet, and the side wound, where you had said it is finished, all the work you had done, your teachings, where you said, keep those thoughts captive and have them come into obedience of what I've taught you. Thank you, Lord, for the strength and the grace to be able to carry out your desires to operate through the lens and through the language of love in the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ, I come against flu symptoms, high fevers, persistent, persistent cough, lung scars. I come against, in the name of Jesus, autism. I come against the lack of desire to live another day. I speak healing upon all urinary tracts in the name of Jesus Christ. I speak healing upon all hearts in the name of Jesus Christ. I speak healing for J and for C in the name of Jesus Christ. I speak healing for those people who have felt they're abandoned. Call them into the fold. You guys, I feel the anointing coming all over me now. Call them into the fold in the name of Jesus Christ. I speak healing of migraines right now in the name of Jesus Christ. Believe and receive in the name of Jesus Christ from the victory of the passion in the name of Jesus Christ. I speak healing to all priests who have been wounded by the flock that they tried to shepherd and who've been wounded in their own families. I speak healing in the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ, I speak for court settlements to go according to your divine will in the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ, I speak healing from depression, oppression, fear, 
worry, lack, anxiety in the name of Jesus Christ. I speak healing for those souls who've been wounded and are confused by sexual identity challenges. I speak wisdom of our Lord. I speak the truth of your identity as a true man, a true woman, just as our Lord made you. Receive the anointing of healing. If it's for your child, for your daughter, for anyone that you know, you can stand in the gap and believe and receive in the name of Jesus, saying, I claim this healing in the name of Jesus. I claim this healing in the name of Jesus. I claim this healing in the name of Jesus. And for spirit of addictions, I uproot every spirit of addiction and the root system from where you came in. I uproot you now, all of your companion spirits, malefactor spirits, and cluster spirits. I send you immediately and directly to the foot of the cross, causing no harm along the way in the name of Jesus Christ. I render you deaf, dumb, blind, mute, and impotent. In the name of Jesus Christ, by the authority of the name of Jesus Christ, bound to the foot of the cross for God to deal with as he will for all eternity. In the name of Jesus Christ and in the name of Jesus Christ, I loosen by the power of his promise that these signs and wonders, Mark 16, 17, will follow those who have faith. They'll lay hands on the sick and they'll recover those, send out demons Lord Jesus, thank you for your promise. Thank you that by their faith they're receiving healing. For you have said and you have written, and that's truth, and the truth sets the captives free, that who you set free is free indeed. I come into agreement with being healed from all vaccines in the name of Jesus that were not of you. I speak healing upon marriages right now in the name of Jesus. Upon every marriage, every family, I speak unity in the name of Jesus. I speak reconciliation in the name of Jesus. I speak forgiveness in the name of Jesus. I speak healthy conversations in the name of Jesus. I speak and eradicate any cancer that may have come in through cancerous relationships, cancerous thinkings, concerns that you're just not worth anything. Cancer is thinking upon the body. I've prayed for people who had cancer in the body and I, I always would go after cancer in this way. And the Lord showed me that some of these souls, they opened the door to cancer. Not that they wanted to, do you hear me? Not that you wanted to, but from cancerous thinking, from cancerous relationships and toxic relationships that were not filled with life and love, but fear, condemnation, and victimization. I speak of strengthening upon your spirit if you're in one of those relationships, that you have the resolve from the God Almighty, from the throne room of heaven, for the blessings of Our Lady, from the intercession of the saints and the white robe martyrs and the blessed virgins of Carmel that you receive healing in this way and that the door to cancer is closed. So I uproot that spirit of cancer from wherever it came in. It's companion spirits, malefactor spirits and cluster spirits. And send them in the name of Jesus to the foot of the cross, not by my authority, but by the authority of the name and his promise. He promised it. Promises are his truth. And he said, when you speak truth of identity, like I was telling you about those souls who have inner vow challenges, I'm not worth anything. I've always been victimized. Can I just tell you to be transparent? I used to tell, I went to therapy for a good amount of time. And I said, what? Do I have like the name victim on my forehead? And literally the Lord answered me much later, though, because I didn't have the capacity at that time to really understand. He said, my daughter, you were hosting the language of being victimized. But the doorway came in through a childhood trauma, not from uh, me wanting to be hosting the language of victim. I, from a young age, sadly, I, I learned it in that way. And so I used the language and, and it made me feel small, insignificant and like a victim. And the Lord by his grace, by his work, by his love, which is available to you. By that, he transformed my victim stance 
to a victor stance. I did not always pray this way. He taught me. And then he put people in my life and circumstances and books and things that added to it. And now I have this vocabulary that he's given to me as I call the knowing place and I go into it. Your fasting that you're doing during this Lent is amazing. And let me just tell you, the Lord told me this message. Can I share it with you? He said, no sacrifice is too small. So you want salt on those eggs and then you go, wait a minute, I can mortify myself and not. That's you decreasing and him increasing. Because another message he gave me was this. He said, every movement, every gesture is counted by me. And in its intensity, in its depth and breadth. Hold on to that. Write it down. Understand that no sacrifice is too small. So when I'm aching going up a stair because I'm feeling pain, I go, oh, wait, I, wait, until I receive healing in some way, either supernaturally or naturally, I have something. I have this moment, this moment in time that can be captured by the heart of Jesus, by the heart of the Immaculate Heart of Mary. And they see us and they will bless us. So I'm praying for all disorders, all generational curses in the name of Jesus from all ways in which they came in. Do you know there's a, a psychologist, he's passed now, and he emptied out more than half of his psychiatric unit in China named Kenneth McCall when he started getting words of knowledge on why his, in, his patients were ill. Not all of them are healed, but as he got words of knowledge and they, he prayed for them, they were instantaneously, some were instantaneously healed and they were considered the most severe. He gave talks about this all over the world. If you can grab one of his talks, they're amazing. So I prayed for my friends over your generations, your families, over disorders, over the mind, body, soul, and spirit. I also prayed that you would begin to live the lifestyle of being dependent on the Holy Spirit, dependent on Jesus, dependent on Mary dependent that you are not alone and you're greatly loved as God the Father told St. Catherine of Siena I love you unspeakably much Amen I can't hear you, Christine. Thank you, thank you. I wanted to make sure my family background noise was not heard. <laughs> I want to ask those of you who are watching or listening to breathe in the grace that you just received for Jesus is with us. Wherever two or three or 50,000 are gathered, he is there among us. So to reiterate, the teaching that we want to leave with you and we'd like you to go away with particularly one teaching there's so many things that vicky says and over the course of the future shows we will elaborate on some of these beautiful subjects um, vicky brought up all the different ways that a door to evil could be opened in a person's soul and each one of those deserves its own show so keep coming <laughs> back every third saturday to learn more but in this particular show the highlight that we wanted to share with you is always remembering the organic with the spiritual and the prayer that is the both are needed well all three one two three are needed for our healing and also to surrender that that god really knows best why we have what we have why we're suffering what we're suffering and the means to carry it or pass through it or be healed from it is all in his hands and um, vicky said 
among many, many things, something that's very important and nearly impossible for yours truly to do, which is not to complain. I um, I would like to uh, put a shout out to Vicki, uh, who suffers so much for us, right? Some people have chosen to suffer are not not chosen consciously, but some of us suffer because we're putting unnecessary burdens on ourselves. And that is not a suffering that Jesus asks of us. When he says, pick up your cross, come and follow me, he's not saying, add a victim stance to yourself, start smoking, scream at your wife. I want you to pick up that suffering. No that suffering that we put on ourselves and and confession and God's forgiveness takes takes care of that as long as our will is trying to get rid of sin but all of us suffer physically emotionally spiritually and the question is how are we going to work through that so please remember research and study it organically are you missing a mineral, a vitamin? Do you need to see a doctor, an herbalist? What is going on? Research, research. I keep myself alive from all these little regimens. As I get older, I need more. They're very physical. They're very organic. It's embarrassing. If you look at my cabinet, you say, what is this? Are you 95? Um, some people can just get up and walk through the day and not fall over. I'm not one of them. So some of us need things of the earth and medicines to function. Others are just robust and hearty. God bless you all. And you run marathons and do things that are crazy like Vicky does. I don't want to talk about it. I don't talk to them <laughs> in marathons. They, they, they can't associate. Just kidding. Uh, <laughs> And then, and then the spiritual side, um, Vicki, remember, said, pray without ceasing. Pray without ceasing. So when are we supposed to pray? Without quiz. ceasing? With the, yes, that's <laughs> right, Vicki. So that doesn't mean we're always going to remember it, but that scripture is a good reminder that when we think about it or when we get a little nudge from the Holy Spirit, we offer up every moment. Um, her maxims, she gets little maxims, little words from God, little bits of wisdom. And the last one she said was so powerful that everything is counted. He remembers everything and that the depths of everything is counted. So if I go through the day saying, I offer this day, this moment, cleaning these dishes, my back pain, my cold to you out of love, that, that counts so much every little sacrifice is counted can um, i tell you the one of the messages super short because i asked the lord how do i understand your unconditional love of us and he said were it a number it would be infinity but that would only scratch the surface oh so you know maybe we should just meditate on that because i um <laughs> that is something that we need to try to grasp even though we can't and perhaps vicky is it a, do you have any closing words or should i close with a prayer right now i do have one closing word my friends take your prayer life from here and pray with your heart that's what matters some people tell me oh well you have all these long prayer i can pray long but i can also pray very short uh, what matters most is you're praying with your heart just pray with your heart and have a conversation with the one who loves you unspeakably much. So let us do that now. Jesus, our sense of your love for us is just a scratch, just a little tiny piece of what it actually is. You love us in everything, in our pains, in our joys, in our sorrows, in our frustrations. All of that is blanketed by your love. So I ask right now a special grace on the listeners. Vicki and I ask that each and every viewer or listener has a moment in time, right now or in the future, of being overwhelmed by your love overwhelmed by your presence. 
overwhelmed by your grace. And that through this encounter, that every person watching or listening to this podcast begins to move in the spirit as a true friend, a true disciple of the Lord Jesus Christ, who is everything, who is the Alpha, the Omega, the beginning and the end. And that all those who are not yet Catholic, but feeling called now or in the future to enter into the mystery, the greatest mystery and the greatest grace of all of receiving the Lord, body and blood, soul and divinity in the Eucharist into our bodies and our souls, the creator of everything, of the universe and beyond, of heaven and earth, the one who dies for us, the one who loves us beyond all telling, is willing to become a small piece of bread or what looks like a small piece of bread, but is actually not, so that he can enter in to us the beloved creature whom he wants to transform into his very likely likeness and image this is um this is the greatest healing there is there is no healing greater than that there is no prayer greater than that there is no gift greater than that and as vicky said all are welcome to the table And we pray for all of you that you will find your way home. God bless you. Amen.